Hello everybody, hope everything's well and as always let's jump right into this. Now, as you can see the title, World Beyond the Poles, is a very good book. I suggest everyone to get this book. I finished this book um, about a week or two ago. I was going to make the video earlier but you know, I was meditating on certain things. Uh, deep contemplation. You know how that goes. But for those who don't know about this book, I'm going to read the back for you. Just to give you a quick summary of it, um, you know, a quick idea. Um, uh, let's begin. Uh, the enclosed pages contain the first and only description of the realistic universe of land, water, oxygen, and vegetation, where human and other forms of animal life abound. This is not a work of fiction, nor is it a technical analyst of anything. It's a simple recital of fact which transcends the most elaborate fiction ever conceived. It projects man's first understanding of the factual and endless universe, which contains human life throughout its vast length and width, regardless of all abstract theory to the contrary. Okay. This book came out in 1981. It's reciting factual evidence that was taken in the 1930s, 20s, 40s, on up. Now, I want to show you a video by a guy named Richard, Richard Admiral Byrd, or Baird. I think it's Byrd. Um, and just hear what he has to say. Remember now, this interview was taken in ni the 1950s, I think 1955 to be exact, but it was taken in the 1950s. So again, just listen to this and see what he has to say. Our very distinguished guest for this evening is Admiral Richard E. Byrd. Is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. And not up around the North Pole because it's getting crowded up there now because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole, on the other side of the South Pole, from Little America. And that okay, now you heard what he said. Okay. Now, this is what he's basically giving you the idea of. I remember I was showing you in those um, that one cartoon or anime, whatever you want to call it. They, they're talking about the same thing. Because remember, these people are occultists. And... And they're only trying to go back into the past. Okay, because I talked about this before. This used to all be just one landmass, Pangea. Okay, then the split happened, the fall. Okay, but you also got to remember. They'll tell you that all these are isolated bodies. Because they have their own atmosphere. Okay, and this atmosphere, when you're looking at, let's say you're right here and you're looking over here through a lens, it will give that global um, body deception, okay, because that's what the lens gives off and it doesn't matter how powerful your camera or your telescope is, it will always give that globe, your globe effect, that globe body effect, so but this is basically what it is, all right? And because we, again, uh, like I said, this used to all, all these landmasses used to be one landmass, which we would call Pangea. Okay. But you have, the split happened because a war happened. Okay. And that's basically how this, you know, the atom split, you know, it's all, it's all metaphysical symbology. Okay. Um, if you look at the the story of the Olympians, the Greek story, how Guy had a son, then the son she was sleeping with the son, and the son wanted to be wanted to rule, and then he had a son, and this, his son wanted to rule. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So. I'm not saying that's how the fall happened. I, I'm telling you that there's an experiment going on, which has happened, and this is the result. 
<clears throat> okay, it was never a time man was not. Now the experiment is trying to go back and get these particular technologies that are basically right next door and possibly meet with these other forms of humans, higher forms of human. Okay. Now, I'm going to read something out of this book real quick, and then you're going to hear what these astronauts have to say. Because, this, this, like I said, this book is really, like I said, get the book and it will really tell you what's going on. And these, and these people will slip up, which they've had. Okay, give me one second here, because I got it marked. Okay, here we go. First, I want to read this one. When one observes the sun from within the stratosphere darkness, it has none of the luminous sky-like quality to be observed from land areas. The sun is just a red disk when viewed from beyond the blue sky. The illumination develops from the mixture of cosmic rays with chemical elements of the sky enveloping land areas throughout the constructed universe whole. The result of such mixture produces sunlight and heat on all land under the universal sky. Okay. All. Okay. The result of such mixture produces sunlight and heat on all land under the universal sky. I had to read that again just to get that in your heads because I'm going to show you guys something in a little bit. And it is that comp. And it is that cosmic ray contact with gas sky elements that results in the luminosity of every outer sky surface area to be observed against the dark stratosphere. The same dark stratosphereness does darkness prevails over celestial sky areas as it is known to prevail over ter terrestrial sky areas. And unless that darkness did prevail over sky areas everywhere, there would be no art of astronomy, only the darkness permits detection of the skylight. All right. Remember, the light comes from the darkness. All right. So you're going to see why in space, uh, well, just, just listen to this. I don't even want to mess anything up. Just listen to this. Only question to which Neil Armstrong responded with an absence of memory. When you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the solar corona what, what stars we could see. Mm -hmm. seeing it. Mm -mm -mm. You heard that? He said he doesn't remember seeing any stars okay because there is no stars outside of uh, the stratosphere that's pretty much what I'm trying to say here okay according to um, according to the, the evidence okay and there's a guy in here they mentioned named Augustus Picard in 1931 when he went up he said the earth looked like an upward disk so that told me maybe it's just um a bunch of land masses within that certain disk okay and it's connected to another disk basically like chakras or like um what that guy was saying when I was showing you about bubbles land masses on giant bubbles floating on the endless black waters bumping into each other creating new life or what have you okay um now look at this i want you guys to listen to this and then i'm going to read a uh, scripture from the bible Amazing 
of things that I had ever seen in the bottom of the ocean. It was while filming for Blue Planet, it was in the Gulf of Mexico. I noticed there's something out in the distance. Couldn't tell exactly what, but it looked like a dark band. And as we approached it, the dark band became a donut. I saw this donut, and it was black in the center. What the heck is that? And so, as we get closer and closer to it, I noticed that the black band had what appeared to be kind of steam over it. And then I looked, and there was water lapping against the shore. This band was a ring of muscles. And inside the ring of muscles was a lake. trying to descend it and bounced off. It was so super saline and dense that the submarine couldn't go down and we literally bounced off. And as we bounced off, we sent ripples heading back to the shoreline. It was insane. I've never seen anything like it. Okay, now, this is all different translations as you can see, but look what it says in Proverbs chapter 8, 29. When he gave the seeds boundaries so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Okay? I was there when he set the limits of the sea so when they would not spread beyond their boundaries, and when he marked off the earth's foundations. Did you hear what this dude said? He said when he tried to get in there, he bounced off of it. Okay? I'm going to put the link in the description, and you guys, so you guys can just do the studies yourself. Like I said, get the book, everything. Okay, and this is the last part. Um, these are world religious leaders in the Arctic. This guy's just going to explain it briefly, and then I'm going to show you. I want you guys to listen to this last part. Very recently, in the past six months or so, how many notable, famous figures have gone down to Antarctica randomly? Buzz Aldrin, John Kerry, the Pope. Um, other world leaders have because there's three structures that seem to have been found there and uh, they're about, they're about um, 10 miles inland and quite close to the coast mm -mm -mm, and you heard that okay now this is the last part I want you to hear real quick it's called the Antarctic partial disclosure psychological operation going back to ancient times the climate was totally different and it's an ancient civilization that they speak about that went back millions and millions of years you know mm. millions and millions of years remember again i've been talking about this it was never time man was not we were at a higher state of being okay the original man and woman come from beyond these poles and they're trying to just figure out we this is when we came to this side of the plane this was our last stop. We were about to go back to the beyond, but when we made the experiment, we stayed here in this physical dimension. You understand? But I'm going to explain that in part two. I just want you to listen to this last part. And the people then were like telepathic super beings. Mm, you see what I'm saying? Telepath telepathic super beings. What I've been telling you. The only people who could be super tele telepathic super beings, the one with the melanin. Okay? Thank you for listening. Okay? I'm going to put all this in the description. And peace and love to the ancient ones.